one of the interesting things this year uh, is because of the very warm Arctic, uh, the data sets they extrapolate into the Arctic uh, somewhat more comprehensively um, show a much larger gap between 2015 and 2016 than the data sets that, uh, that only have a partial uh, Arctic um, component. Uh, and effectively, their, say, their, uh, their implicit assumption is that the Arctic is warming as fast as the rest of the world, when it's quite obvious that it is warming quite a bit faster than the rest of the world. So uh, our opinion is that, that is underestimating uh, the changes and therefore underestimating the anomaly for 2016. Uh, but you'll see, I think, with, um, you know, there's, there's the product by Cowton and Way, uh, which takes the hand CRUT4 data set and kind of extrapolates through the Arctic and other data poor regions. And, and they will show something very similar to what uh, the NASA GISTEMP data uh, is going to show. And, and there, there, it's going to be a very uh, Judging from you know the year to date, uh, it should be a very clear uh, signal. It won't be quite as clear in the uh, uh, NOAA NCDC or NCEI or HAD crew datasets, uh, but it will be very clear in ECMWF. It will be very clear in uh, Captain Away and, and Gistem. There's no like one satellite that just like does just that calculation. Uh, everything that you're doing is an amalgam of you know quite widely distributed measuring stations with different technologies, and then when you go back in time, that network has both changed and the measuring capabilities have changed, the environments have changed, and you need to uh, piece these things together very carefully. And as our understanding of those different systems and of those different changes, uh, partly from you know the digitization of uh, of older data uh, by you know keeping different things uh, going in parallel and then checking one network against another network uh, we've been able over the last uh, you know five years or so uh, to really kind of pin down some of those systematic errors I mean we're not we're not we're not so worried about random errors uh, you know because they cancel out in in the uh, in the long term but when you've got a systematic shift you know, from ocean-going vessels to buoys, you have to make sure that these things are properly calibrated. And if they're not calibrated, you can get a, uh, you know, a, a, it looks like a shift, uh, but it actually isn't. It's just because of the measurement platform changing. Uh, so we have to be very careful about that. And, uh, you know, one of the recent papers, uh, House Feather at Autor, uh, they, uh, you know, they looked, at, uh, they looked at the SST data sets um, and, you know, and showed, I think, quite convincingly that the one that's being used by NOAA and NASA um, is actually the one that's, uh, that's most coherent to uh, the, uh, the best estimates that you can have. Um, so we're pretty comfortable that people are doing the right job there. Um, but it's, it's also worth talking. It's also worth pointing out that the changes that we are talking about they're all pretty small, right? If you just didn't, if you didn't take any of those corrections and just added up everything, kind of in a slightly naive way, it's still abundantly obvious that the planet has warmed by about a degree in the last hundred years.